Hello, my loves, and welcome back to the Soulmate Journey Empath. This is an out of order uh, twin flame check in reading, a pick, a pick a deck uh, twin flame check in here. Um, uh, because of the holidays, I did not upload uh, for three of the days that I intended to upload, so I'm catching up this week to make sure uh, that everyone is getting the content that they're waiting for. So what we're going to do here is about, uh, you know, 20 minute check in um, for three different piles here. Pile one, we have the wild unknown tarot. Pile two, we have the uncommon tarot. And pile three, we have the light seers tarot. And for all three decks, we will also be getting oracle messages from the your heart knows the way oracle. So take a moment, take a deep breath. Um, I like to close my eyes when I select from a pick a card. I will pause the video. I'll close my eyes, take in a nice deep breath, sometimes three, exhale. And on that last exhale, I open my eyes and go to exactly uh, whichever pile I am drawn to. All right. So take a moment, see which pile is calling to you. And we will check in on your twin flame journey. All right, if you selected pile one, you selected the beautiful wild unknown tarot. So let's go ahead and see what is going on in your twin flame connection at this time. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jamie, Soulmate Journey Empath. I am a starseed twin flame light worker, a cautious librarian, Reiki master, and psychic medium. And I pull for twin flame energies every Friday. Sometimes these are collective readings, sometimes they're pick a card. It really varies here. We have Queen of Swords energy is trying to pop out here, pile one. If you haven't taken opportunity to subscribe yet, I encourage you to. Please hit the notification bell so you know every time I'm uploading something new. If you could give the video a thumbs up, it would sure help me out. If this resonates, comment. I love to interact with the comments. And I also love knowing that the messages are getting to the right people. So, let's see. What is going on here? So at the bottom of the deck, we have the Nine of Wands energy. Um, a, a very long journey here. Um, I'm getting for you pile number one that uh, this is a pile that's been on the journey for a while. Let's see what is going on for the collective energy in this dynamic. And there's that Queen of Swords again. Ooh, okay. Okay, and I do read reversals in this deck, so let's see what's going on. We have the Magician upright. We have the Hierophant in reverse. We have the Queen of Swords in reverse, and let's get one more energy here. One more card, please, so we can understand what's going on in this situation. And we have the Sun of Swords or the Knight of Swords energy here. Okay. Um, this is definitely uh, a disconnected energy. What I'm picking up on is whoever you are, the viewer of the reading. Um, there has been a disagreement or some harsh words that were exchanged, um, some harsh, harsh actions taken. Um, because, um, when we have, um, the queen of swords in reverse mother of swords in this deck and the knight of swords, knight of swords is fast moving energy. Um, uh, for me as a reader, a lot of times when the knight of swords comes up, uh, somebody, there is an energy around where it's very likely that someone can get hot headed and run off at the mouth and say something that they don't mean or really go for the jugular verbally. And, um, 
what I see here is it looks like the divine feminine has cut off the divine masculine um, or walked away disconnected energy because we have this hierophant in reverse. Um, th this this uh, masculine energy that I'm picking up on here um, with this son of swords is uh, very, um, it's a, it's a, it, it's not an entirely mature energy. Um, and so this is more of a motive um, behind this very destructive communication that's happened here. But we have this Queen of Swords in the reverse. Queen of Swords upright is very discerning, cool, calm, and collected. Queen of Swords in reverse got pushed way too far. Um, <laughs> Uh, and Queen of Swords in reverse, uh, they're going to go for the jugular verbally too. Um, so what's really interesting is uh, there's still this energy here with the magician of uh, this still could be manifested. But right now, as it looks um, for this dynamic, like both people have walked away from participating in it. Um, so if, if that's not you again, take what resonates for you. And if this sounds nothing like your situation, then maybe another pile is for you, but there's this expectation that I'm getting with, with the magician, um, that, that both of the counterparts here are expecting the other one to be the one that comes forth with an apology. Like I, I, I'm just getting that so intuitively. Um, but uh, with this magician here, you have all of the tools that you need, each of you, um, to get your energies upright, to get this connection, these energies upright again. Um, but with this knight of swords, mother of swords, um, I want to remind you, uh, you know, a little bit of a trigger warning here. I'm pretty honest about, um, what I see, because as a divine feminine that's been working this journey, we have to be very honest with ourselves. Yes, there is a queen energy versus a knight energy coming in here um, for the masculine and feminine energies. Um, but this divine feminine energy, um, this has been a real test in the growth that you have been investing in. Um because part of applying everything that you're learning about yourself, about life, about love on this journey is being placed in triggering situations and responding differently. And um, this is a divine feminine that was trying to keep it together, trying to keep it together. And um, rather than being in that queen of swords, upright, discerning boundaries, etc., this is an energy of <clears throat> having allowed things uh, with the communication to get so far. <coughs> Excuse me. This divine feminine just absolutely lost their shit um, is just what I pick up so much. And it's okay um, because healing is messy. Um, but... You know, if if you are sitting there waiting for your counterpart, whether you're the masculine or the feminine, because um, I see uh, mirrored unhealthy communication on both sides of this, um, you know, be accountable for your own part in how this conversation or your communication with each other has absolutely blown up. Um, but also remember to have healthy boundaries, um, not impregnable, impregnable walls. Um, because if you, if you have healthy boundaries, appropriate boundaries, um, you're still participating in this journey, but right now in the energy that you're both in, you're not participating. And I just started shuffling and I have two coming out here. So let's see what's coming in energy wise. And there's two of them. Let's get the other two, please. What's coming in energy-wise in this connection? Okay. Thank you. 
Let's see what we have here. Okay, so we have the strength card coming out underneath this um, magician. Strength card is a big message. Whether you're the masculine or the feminine in this dynamic, um, the, the communication has devolved and both parties are responsible for this. Um, this is a lesson in self-control. This is a lesson in endurance, in strength, in your spiritual maturity. And uh, the ways in which this communication is not in alignment are supposed to be pointing to you where you can strengthen these aspects of yourself with the magician. Uh, again, with the magician being the first energy coming out for this dynamic, this is saying that both participants in the soul connection have all of the tools that they need to get this going. Um, and it's, it's really easy sometimes, um, especially when we're very triggered to look at the other person's responsibility and expect the other person, you know, but again, I want to remind you that's having an expectation. And part of this journey is learning how unhealthy having um, you know, specific expectations. Again, expectations are different than boundaries. Um, but to really check your expectations of others and see if you meet those expectations yourself. You know, again, these are mirrored energies. And essentially what you've done, and I want to say this to the Divine Feminine, you know, if you're struggling to make sense of this, what I see energetically is this mirroring where... Uh, maybe someone did, maybe the masculine did come at you um, with less emotionally mature communication or angry or uh, hasty, um, said some really stupid things. Um, you flipped <laughs> your queen of swords energy to mirror them. And um, so while they have some maturing to do in this situation, um, you're also responsible for getting your own energy back into alignment here. And this mother of wands or queen of wands energy here coming out underneath the hierophant in a lot of situations, the feminine is the front runner, um, in this connection. And so if this connection, this soul connection is going to get back on track because free will is at play here. Okay, there's always a lesson to be learned, whatever choice you make. But in the big picture, this little detour in communication has really uh, gotten both the masculine and the feminine um, uh, to take a couple of steps back from the situation. And what's being suggested here is feminine, be responsible for getting into alignment yourself. And when you find yourself in a better vibration, um, it is going to attract this masculine energy back. Um, and it's going to be, you know, what I'm getting is a lot of talk and not enough action here that's been going on in this dynamic. There's going to be more action. You embody action and embody your empowerment, Divine Feminine. We have the Six of Pentacles here, okay? This coming out underneath the, the Mother of Swords in particular, in reverse, um, which was the Divine Feminine energy tells me, you know, um, and I got, I'm getting this so intuitively, that this situation, this the way that the dynamic is right now, um, the type of communication that's gone on in this dynamic, it's reciprocal, the Six of Pentacles is all about things being equal, give and take. So um, be very conscious at your beliefs about the masculine and their behavior in this situation because it's mirrored. It's mirrored. And you cannot control the masculine. You cannot control their free will or decisions. Masculine, you cannot control the feminine, their free will or their decisions. However, uh, you do have control over yourself here. And I do see this divine masculine energy uh, going into hermit mode, doing a little, like pulling back here, you know, turtling, <laughs> um, pulling the head back into the shell and, you know, trying to figure this situation out. Um, so this is definitely a separation energy, but 
you are being reminded that, you know, this is a journey, not a destination um, in these energies and to be very conscious of, um, you know, the way that you are interpreting the behavior, the way, you know, judgment, I keep hearing judgment, judgment, judgment. Um, so for, if you picked pile one, um, you may have, um, some significant, Virgo placements is what I'm getting. The divine feminine may have some significant Virgo placements. Um, Virgo, uh, sun, moon, rising, mercury. Yeah, a lot of mercurial energy here with the magician and um, me getting this Virgo with the queen of swords. Um, and we do have the hermit card on the table here too. So, um, Let's see, for the Divine Feminine specifically, I've got a lot of Divine Feminine viewers here. What needs to give for this Divine Feminine? What needs to shift? Okay. Um, we have the Eight of Cups emotionally walking away. And the Ace of Swords finding clarity. So, yeah, this Divine Feminine, I very much get like you got so upset, you felt so triggered that, you know, you kind of lost control of yourself in this interaction. And you still, this, this is mirrored energy with this hermit and eight of cups here. Um, and, and what this eight of cups means for me as a reader is literally, Walking away from a situation to find your happiness, your individual happiness, nine of cups, divine feminine. You need a little bit of emotional distance from this connection to be able to get some clarity on it. Now let's see um, what's needed for the divine masculine at this time. What is needed for the divine masculine energy to shift? We have the two of pentacles again, <laughs> restoring balance, restoring balance and the hangman. Wow. Um, these are powerful energies happening for, uh, the divine masculine in this connection. Um, and we have the tower coming out here at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, what went down with this son of swords, uh, mother of swords in reverse is definitely like tower level communication. Um, for me as a reader, but we have the divine masculine needing to get things in balance in their material world, needing to balance themselves out. And for a lot of us, myself included, um, when you focus on your day to day life and have that aspect of yourself in balance, um, it helps you restore the balance in your mental, uh, emotional and spiritual bodies. And then we have the hangman. This is hanging out. This is looking at this from a new perspective to gain wisdom. So um, recognize that, that this blow up was very necessary um, in order for you both to uh, get these aspects of self mirrored, processed, addressed. Okay. But the message is coming in so strong here with the magician opening, you know, the reading for you, pile one, that you have all the tools to get this back on track, to get your own energy turned right side up, to get back in alignment with participating in this journey. It is just an intended separation at this time. So I want to close it out and get some oracle messages from your heart knows the way for you, pile one. If you'd like to schedule a personal reading, the link to my Etsy shop, Soulmate Journey Reads, is in the description box below, as well as my links to Instagram and Facebook communities. If you are feeling generous and would like to donate to the channel, the links for my Amazon wish list for the channel, as well as Cash App and PayPal, are also in the description box below. So let's see what guidance for pile one, please. What guidance does pile one need at this time? What guidance does pile one need? Wow. 
What guidance does Kyle want me? Okay. Thank you. So, wow. These are very powerful messages and they so, you know, really support what we're getting for the reading here. We have your heart can't break. And this is Oracle message number 47, four and seven add to 11 in numerology. And I love 11 as a master number. It's, it's that divine guidance. Okay. 11, 11, we talk about twin flames, right? Um, your heart cannot break. Um, this is not a breaking of any part of you other than an outdated paradigm. You are, what is being challenged in your twin flame dynamic at this time is you are being triggered to a part of you that you have adapted to survive other situations that you don't have to carry forward with you. Okay, so this separation, yes, it's excruciating. The words that were exchanged, probably excruciating as well. But your guys are telling you, like, we are so with you. You have so much, so much support. And you have all the tools here that you need. Next, we have love lead you home number 10. Okay, this is a completion of the old dynamic between the two of you. It has to transform in order for you to get closer to being in alignment for union. So recognize that the love between you, just like your heart can't break, the love between you, despite, you know, the words that may have been exchanged, that the love between you is always existing and the love will always lead you back to one another. We have number three, see beauty in others. This is to get back into alignment. Yeah, um, we feel so, so triggered, especially when we have blow up conversations uh, because aspects of ourselves that we're not comfortable with really, really trigger us. And we may be working on healing or mastering those aspects of ourselves, but this is just letting you know where you still need to heal. And you have, in order to really be connecting with this vibration of unconditional love, which twins have a mission to steward to our collective, you have to love yourself and see yourself in other people. So see the beauty in others. You know, um, I, I can see that this divine feminine has really been working on their boundaries. Um, but, um, there's still more work to be done. You know, um, when we have boundary issues, this is something, um, that takes a significant amount of healing. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight or just in a couple of months completely. It's an ongoing process. It's an evolution into a different lifestyle. And then last but not least, we have be in the service of love. Yes. Um, especially, you know, because you have a mission here as a twin flame. If you cannot find the mercy and compassion for yourself or your divine counterpart, it's going to be a real struggle to steward that vibration as part of stepping in to your soul mission. Okay. So a little bit of tough love there, pile one, but just know that it is coming from a place of absolute love, faith, and belief in you. And, um, I, I speak on this well, cause this is an energy that, you know, I have been working with as well. So just remember all of the tools, whether you're the masculine or the feminine in this dynamic, you both have all of the tools within you to do your own healing and attract each other as a, a more positive vibrational match. Okay. So embrace this space and use it for your healing is a huge, huge message. So as always, I am sending you so, so much healing, love, and light. Bye-bye, Pile 1. Hello, Pile 2. If you chose Pile 2, you selected the absolutely beautiful Uncommon Tarot. So let's go ahead and get right into your energies. If you're new to my channel, hello. I encourage you to subscribe, hit the notification bell. My name is Jamie. This is Soulmate Journey Empath. 
I am a light worker, a Reiki master, a starseed twin flame, Akashic librarian, and psychic medium. And I intuitively and traditionally read these energies. I am a divine feminine on the twin flame journey myself. And so these energies are really easy for me to tap into. If you're interested in scheduling a personal reading, uh, the link on my storefront, as well as my other platforms, Instagram and Facebook are in the description box below. My upload schedule is also listed in that description box below. And if you are feeling generous and would like to donate to the channel, there is an Amazon wish list as well as a cash app and PayPal in the description box below. I'm getting really fluid energies with this shuffle. I haven't had it break on me or anything pop out yet. Oh, there we go. What did it break on? King of Pentacles, Nine of Wands. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Okay. Well, let's continue and see if either of those comes back up as whoop, continue shuffling. Sometimes they do. That happened for pile one. So uh, we have... With that King of Pentacles and Nine of Wands, that is a weary masculine here. Let's see what the energy is overall for the connection at this time. Okay, we have the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. There's that Nine of Wands coming up, but we have it in reverse. We have Death in reverse. And let's get one more energy here. And we have the Nine of Swords upright. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, I am getting, what do we have on the bottom? The Justice card here. Major Arcana. All right, right now, uh, what I'm picking up for pile number two is that this situation is completely out of balance because um, it is still in the longing and pining stage of separation. We have this Ace of Pentacles, which is bringing this into the 3D, solidifying this in the 3D, connecting in the 3D in reverse. We had that Nine of Wands in reverse. Um, Nine of Wands is all about uh, perseverance, um, but there's also a sense of boundaries um, with that Nine of Wands. In reverse, this is an energy of kind of like having given up with this death in reverse. Um, something is not transforming here. Um, a, a cycle is not closing out. And with this Nine of Swords upright, there is a tremendous amount of sleeplessness at night. Um, th th this is, wow. This is a heavy, heavy uh, vibe in this dynamic right now. Let me go. I want to jump right into the second row and clarify. Um, clarify what's needed here. And we have two, the High Priestess and the Hierophant. Okay, these are both upright energies. This is good. This is good. We have upright, the Ace of Cups. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And one more energy, please. In terms of what's shifting. And then we have the Seven of Wands. We had a bunch of others, but I'm only going to take that seven off the top. So... This gives us the Queen of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so let's put these down for a second and break down these energies. Um, <laughs> I am for pile number two, and this isn't going to resonate with everybody. Um, we did have that King of Pentacles poke up um, at the very beginning with the deck split here, as well as that Nine of Wands. Um... 
this feminine energy is blocked from this masculine energy. This connection is blocked uh, from alignment and union at this time. Um, and with this nine of wands in the hierophant underneath, um, there could be uh, karmic obstacles in the way is what I'm getting. And, and it's, 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 there's some kind of delay in an offer coming in, some kind of delay in grounding this with this Ace of Cups energy. Um, but I'm getting so strongly um, that, you know, um, the feminine energies are really, really uh, pronounced. This is, with this High Priestess, Divine Feminine, you know deep in your heart that the separation is meant to be right now. It's meant to help both obtain some wisdom here with the wise one, which is the higher fit in this deck. I absolutely love this deck of cards. Okay. Each of you has the keys to development on this journey. And you know, for me, when I read for the journey, in particular, the Hierophant, whether it's upright or um, reversed is going to tell me uh, whether or not the counterparts are truly participating on the journey. So, yeah, okay, Divine Feminine, I'm talking to you at this point. And again, um, I'm very, very straightforward um, because we have to be very self-conscious conscious of ourselves, our tendencies, our motives, our behaviors in order to, um, you know, move all of the karmic obstacles and restrictions to our personal evolution. So this journey is all about confronting yourself and taking control of yourself, um, embracing yourself and working on the parts of you that need healing. So I will be very straightforward about the energies that I see. And I want you to know that I do this from love because um, higher me, this is coming from higher me. I channel my higher self in these readings. So uh, what's happening here? Divine Feminine, this is not transforming in the way that you want it to because you still have an expectation about how it's supposed to transform. Um, the boundaries. There's seven of wands and then this nine of wands in reverse. Uh, boundaries are what you are needing to work on at this time. Boundaries and self-love with this ace of cups, okay? Um, and you know with this high priestess energy, you know in your heart of hearts, your higher self is telling you this. You know better. But what it is, is uh, with this queen of cups... Uh, you are working on heart healing at this time. But you know, it's interesting. Look what's right underneath the queen of cups, the king of cups. This is a mirrored energy. This is a mirrored energy. Okay. Um, the masculine is not really making much of an appearance in this reading, except to show up as a counterpart. But what's interesting is when I think in terms of this journey in the cup suit, um, when we're in Queen of Cups energy, sometimes our emotions can get the best of us and we're not as emotionally balanced. King of Cups energy upright is, is emotional maturity. You have mastered emotional maturity when you get into this uh, King of Cups energy. Um, so not only do we have a matched pair here, but this is a very clear message um, that there is this healing that needs to be done. And then we have this nine of cups on the bottom. This is individual happiness, the pursuit of individual happiness. Um, when we have this self-love, the ace of cups, and then we get our wishes on top of it. Look, there's the 10 of cups right there. So um, there's, there's definitely this mess. And then there's eight of cups underneath it. The Eight of Cups underneath it, which is emotionally walking away for a little bit to go toward. We go from the Eight of Cups to the Nine of Cups. Then there's this Two of Swords. Two of Swords energy. 
Um, and it's blindfolded, it's blocked. There is something you know that you are refusing to just acknowledge, accept, or see about this situation. And we have the 10 of Pentacles. Okay, so this is something that I was getting. It's not going to resonate with all of you. Um, but for some of you, this masculine is in a pre-existing karmic contract. And uh, with that, uh, King of Pentacles, when we think of the King of Pentacles in terms of suits, that's not just success in the material world. Uh, for me as a reader, the King of Pentacles is the husband. Um. So, it, it, I mean, they don't literally have to be um, in a marriage, but for some of you, that's really going to resonate. And um, what I'm getting is if that's you and, and this is you, feminine, you've been waiting, just magically waiting for the universe <laughs> to deliver this masculine. Like they're going to one day wake up and decide, I don't want this anymore. Um, th th this is part of your heart healing that you are being drawn to. Okay. You need to have healthier boundaries. You need to be putting this love into your own cup because you are responsible for it. And you have to learn how to fill your own cup before you come into alignment with this masculine. Okay. This masculine, um, for whatever reason, you know, um, in order for you to be a, a matched energy, to be able to come back into alignment you've got to get up to this King of Cups energy too, which is some emotional maturity. And I see that with this boundary setting here with the Seven of Wands. So um, let's see what kind of energies are coming in that you don't see. What kind of energies are coming in for this connection? King of Coins, there he is. That King of Pentacles, there he is. <laughs> oh, and I love that because we did see those two come out. What's coming in that Pile 2 doesn't see for their Twin Flame connection? What's coming in that Pile 2 do Ooh, doesn't see? Well, there's O2. We have the Emperor, Divine Masculine Energy, right underneath the Hierophant. We have the King of Wands right underneath death in reverse in the ace of cups whoa now these cards really want to come out and tell a story um let's see yeah there were like several of them that tried to pop out but we want to be concise here let's get what's the final energy oh my gosh queen of swords yeah this is crowded this is crowded um Divine Feminine, you may be the one that is in a pre-existing karmic contract. You both could be. Um, but there's this big message here uh, because there are too many energies around you. And um, with this Five of Cups coming in as the bottom of the deck energy, um, what it is that you're so focused on is what is what is making you upset um you're upset about these boundaries um but this is a lesson this is you learning right now in this connection that maybe the boundaries that you thought were healthy boundaries in your other relationships in other aspects of your life actually need to be firmer and more solid because what i get is that this masculine has put up boundaries and this feminine is feeling really rejected, has kind of been patiently waiting. But the thing is, you've been waiting feminine instead of putting this work into yourself. And um, in order for you to come into empowerment here, this is when I think of King of Wands energy, this is coming into empowerment. You have to invest in yourself. You have to create your own happiness and stability. And you have to defend it. Um, Seven of Wands is not just somebody putting boundaries up, but it's also defending what you have worked for. So if if you've been on this journey trying to find your peace and working for your peace and healing for your peace, Divine Feminine, you protect that. It is yours to protect. And with this Queen of Swords energy, again, boundaries with this sword. 
your peace is precious. It is yours to protect. But I think it's really, really interesting because, um, yeah, we have emperor under the wise one. So, um, you know, it's interesting is we have an emperor here, but not an empress in, Yeah, um, what's really interesting about this is usually you don't see this, but in this dynamic, I see that the Divine Masculine is actually uh, further along on this journey than the Divine Feminine because um, we have the Emperor showing up already underneath Wise One. Um, but we have this King of Pentacles. You know with this Ace of Pentacles in reverse, you know Divine Feminine. Trust your inner knowing. You know the time is not right. That these energies need to be a match. And um, in truth, I think what this feminine is looking at is you're looking at the masculine to, to see some kind of transformation in them. Either before you will make a transformation for yourself or uh, because you are not in touch with the, the fact that you are the one that is holding you back from transformation on this journey at this time. Um, but you're in such a heavy energy. Let me get a little bit of advice for this feminine. Let me do a couple extra messages for this feminine because, oh baby, I feel in your heart. I feel in your heart the dark place that you're in. Okay, yeah, and there's the devil showing up. <clears throat> and page of Wands on the bottom of the deck. Okay, this is about lightening things up and bringing in joy. Nine of Cups, Three of Wands, and then here's the devil. Okay. You are purging karmic beliefs right now. And also, um, conditional love with this devil coming up. So I'm going to put this on the left because for me, it does always divine feminine. But your advice is three of wands, nine of cups. Actively, consciously look forward, set goals, set plans for yourself. It's not to say that this masculine is not going to be, you know, um, a part of your journey. I mean, it doesn't matter at this point. Okay. The divine wants you to know, to focus on yourself, to focus on what makes you happy because you need to feel like a whole complete happy person that is free from your own personal demons to really, really, come together on this journey to come into alignment so that you can collaborate on your mission. And it, it's reminding you, you know, part, start working on your own journey. You know, you probably have been going from being on a journey that you've been on for quite some time, a way of being, a way of living, a way of thinking. And, you know, um, on this journey, what I'm getting so strongly is you think that connecting with this masculine is the vehicle to something different. Um, this masculine is the catalyst. You are your own vehicle. They are their own vehicle. You, you have been a catalyst to each other, but there's free will on this journey and trust and believe that you owe it to yourself, um, to put the time, effort, energy into your own healing and focus on filling your own cup. Focus on bringing excitement and joy. You know, you may feel like a novice because maybe you have been a person that is um, recovering from codependence and you haven't spent much time on your own, but you owe it to yourself. Okay. You owe it to yourself, divine feminine, to get out there and find your own way. Um, part of separation is to help us individually heal and get into alignment with our individual truth. And the closer that we get to our individual truth in alignment with it and co-creating and working with our team, you know, as a collateral, 
we are also getting closer to our counterpart. So let's get some closing messages for you. Pile two. What are some messages for pile two on their twin flame journey at this time? Fear is a luxury. You are already whole. Oh my gosh. Yes. Can I get an amen? And let's get one more for pile two. And see, I, I, I love it when these messages come together like this because, um, you know, and, and I want you all to know, part of why I know this is because I've been there. Um, this is this is a, a combination of what I'm seeing with my intuitive gifts and, and also my wisdom on this journey. And so I want you to know, right? So it says fear is a luxury. Number six, restore your balance. Restore your balance here. Fear is a luxury. Okay. And it is preventing you from transforming into the beautiful butterfly that you are. So fear is a luxury and you are already whole. You are already whole. Um, you know, I do get, I do get overcoming codependence in this pile because, um, there is this, this, uh, energy of, you know, well, I need my person. I need my person. Or you may have always had a person, um, to, to fill those holes, to depend on for your personal stability and emotional fulfillment. And you have to be full on your own. This journey is about two full conscious parts of the same energy, um, coming together to create something cosmic and dynamic to help this collective. Then we have compassion is your freedom. Have some compassion for yourself, divine feminine. Love yourself, nurture yourself. Treat yourself as the empress um, would treat you, okay? you If you wanna get into this em empress energy, you have to consciously nurture yourself. You have to consciously set healthy boundaries and you have to consciously make yourself a priority. We pattern the way that other people treat us. So, um, you know, if you're not making yourself a priority, we tend to attract other people who take us for granted when we're in that energy. And then here we go with this high priestess. And this unleash your purpose here, number 31. What is going to restore your internal sense of stability is getting in alignment with your soul mission here. All right, pile number two. So I hope that these messages resonate with you. And, you know, um, I hope to just be very honest in this these readings. And I apologize um, in advance if anyone feels triggered or hurt. Just understand that I am trying to help you um, consciously work this journey to the best of your potential because you are divine and you owe it to yourself. All right. So as always, pal to you, I'm sending you so much healing, love, and light. Bye-bye. Hello, pal three. If you selected pile three, you selected the light seer zero. So let's jump right in here. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Love you so much. If you are new to my channel, this is Soulmate Journey Impact. My name is Jamie. I am a light worker, star seed, twin flame, Akashic Librarian, Reiki Master, and Psychic Medium. And I'm a divine feminine on this journey, so I connect with these energies pretty easily. Um, if you are interested in subscribing to the channel, I encourage you to hit that little notification bell. That way you are updated every time I upload a new twin flame reading. Also, if you look in the description box below, you will see my upload schedule and note that twin flame readings are usually on Friday. So let's get the overall energy of this dynamic. What is the overall energy of this twin flame connection at this time? Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, beautiful, beautiful energies. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh. And I am taking that upright. I do read reversals uh, when I use tarot for twins. Um, and let's get one more energy. Wow. So far, so good. Pile three. Whenever I do these twin flame readings, it's usually like pile three is, uh, it goes a little bit easier with the energy. So, wow. And what do we have on the bottom? <laughs> Six of wands. Okay. So pile three, there has been this tremendous transformation in this connection. Um, and what this has stemmed from, and I'm getting, I, again, um, most of the twins that follow me are divine feminines, but I will call out the energies as I see them. Again, um, I try to use they as the pronouns for divine masculine and divine feminine. So, uh, the divine feminine here is coming up. Their energy is coming up big time. Uh, the divine feminine has this inner sense of knowing that they need to put the work in that now is not the right time. And this has completely transformed the, the dynamic. Um, what we have here, uh, for me, and this is really interesting because this Knight of Swords is runner energy big time. Um, we do have some running energy, um, coming through for the divine masculine. And I want to get one other, let's get one more for this dynamic, please. There we go. Yeah. I figured there was a part of it that was missing and a three of cups. Okay. Okay. And it goes right there is what my guides are telling me. So divine feminine, you are in a pretty good alignment. Um, you're putting in the work. You recognize that, uh, the running there, this is a masculine runner, uh, here coming in as the Knight of Swords, um, with this deck. Uh, I don't always perceive the Knight of Swords as a runner, but in this deck, I definitely do. Um, Divine Feminine, you're aware that this is an opportunity to put healing into yourself, to come into alignment with Soul Tribe, um, to come into alignment with yourself. Um, but we do have this masculine and runner energy, which means um, that this is a fresh energy change, divine feminine. Uh, you may be very conscious of it, or it may be less conscious to you, but you have actually just stopped chasing this masculine energetically. Um, and even if you were not, um, you know, just talking to them, like, like trying to have conversations with them that were not organic, like just trying to keep the connection going. The amount of mental energy that you were devoting to the masculine, you have come to the understanding, oh, you know what? <laughs> this is contributing to this chasing because it's energetically still reaching, reaching. Um, so this divine feminine is like, ah, and like holding the candle here. Like, oh, okay. It, I just put all this energy into myself. And again, we have these moon cycles showing up with the eight of pentacles, uh, divine feminine energy. We also see alignment with, um, you know, with this three of cups. We also see alignment with like, uh, tr like, uh, soul family, um, maybe members of the soul group. Um, for a lot of you, I know that I can speak to this on my twin flame journey as a star seed twin flame. Um, my twin was the first person that I met that was a member of my soul group. Um, and so that contributed to a lot of the, um, intensity and excitement in the situation. Um, but once we went into separation, I ended up connecting with a ton of my soul tribe and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, and, and this is happening for you, divine feminine. Um, and like spirits coming through to just acknowledge like this inner knowing and that you've finally gotten in touch with your inner knowing. Um, I feel like we need get one more message on the masculine 
just in case, just in case. But I really get that this, the divine feminine in, in this dynamic that they, um, they've surrendered and they're okay with it. Uh, <laughs> the divine masculine. It's, it's, oh, this is a rough energy. Okay. So this divine masculine is struggling to adapt uh, to this energetic change here. Um, we have them coming in with the nine of swords as well as, um, this knight or nine of swords, knight of swords. There is some realization of this runner energy that's happened for, uh, the divine masculine. Um, and this dynamic is still in the process of balancing out. Now, after that, at the bottom of the deck, we do have the Queen of Swords, boundaries and discernment. Um, this is beautiful because look at how thoughtful and contemplative and empowered this Divine Feminine energy appears. So, again... Um, you know, uh, divine masculine and divine feminine are not gender specific energies. That's why I use they pronouns. Um, but this divine feminine is recognized that they need to take the lead here and are doing so. Um, let's see what energies are shifting. What energies are shifting here? We have the 10 of wands. The Four of Swords. Two more, please. What energies are shifting? The Chariot. And I'm taking that in reverse because it did come out this way. And one more, please. What energies are shifting in this dynamic for Pile? Ah, Queen of Wands. Beautiful. Okay. And at the bottom, we have the three of wands. So we got three of wands, three of cups out here. Beautiful. Master number 33 coming into alignment, divine guidance in collaboration with the divine, divine feminine working on empowerment here, working on empowerment, putting down the burden of, you know, trying to manifest something in this connection when the timing is not right and recognizing that, um, I'm getting so strongly with this 10 of wands, four of swords energies. This shows like karmic soul cords, <laughs> the red cord. Okay. In the bird's nest, um, recognizing that this time out is not a burden, that it is not a burden recognizing with the chariot in reverse, that these energies, the yin and the yang, that they need to be balanced out. That individually, okay, I love it because that individually, in order for this law of attraction to work energetically in this connection, that the masculine and the feminine aspects of each counterpart have to be in balance. So they're out of balance and the divine feminine is like, okay, cool. I'm going to work on me. I'm going to work on my empowerment. I am going to work on my abundance. I am going to work on attracting and drawing in um, soul family, you know, uh, other making friends with other folks that are on the journey to gain insight and advice. But I am not going to quit living my life because I'm in this three of wands energy. I'm looking forward to the future and all of the opportunities that are meant to come my way. And this is a really important uh, perspective to adopt on this journey because um, the separation is provided to give you the space to come into alignment. When you first um, experiencing your triggering um, with this connection, it is meant to help you get back into alignment with who you are meant to be, who your soul is. And that there is a lot of work when we've crafted a whole um, life to whatever age we're at, okay? And it's different for everybody. But it's literally having to transform your life from the inside out 
so that the life that you see, the reality you're experiencing is a manifestation or an expression of who you truly are. This takes work. This does not happen overnight. Um, this, this doesn't, um, it's not to say that there will not be phases of union along the way, because there are many phases of union. There are many types of union. Um, but this is just a beautiful energy because, um, this divine feminine has gotten in touch with really what this journey is about. Uh, divine masculine is still delayed. Yeah. We have seven of cups. So, um, this, this connection at this time is very much in the 5D. Um, it hasn't really grounded in yet and that's okay. This feminine is okay with it. Excuse me. Almost sneezed there. We do have the moon as the energy on the bottom of the deck. Okay. Um, pulling away, it was absolutely necessary. Like, because what I see with this whole picture at this time is this feminine quitting chasing triggered the masculine to go into their dark night of the soul. This is exactly what was needed. This is exactly what was meant to happen in this dynamic. And in this four of swords, in this like a, a spiritual time out, like emotional downtime, healing time, creating safe space for self. Um, I think divine feminine, you already know this deep down. Um, but you're not doing this out of the motive of trying to force the energy um, to get to union with the masculine. Um, I'm getting it because you've embraced the journey and that's absolutely beautiful. So, you know, you have been through a lot of really heavy shadow work to get to the point where you're okay with it as it is. So, just so much love and pride and respect to you, Divine Feminine. And I hope that you feel that way about yourself. Okay. Let's get a drink here and see. What energies are coming in in this connection that are unseen? What are unseen energies that are coming into this connection for pile three? Nine of pentacles. Beautiful. This is empowering. Empowerment, independence, stability. Absolutely beautiful. This flip. We're to, uh, King of Wands upright. Beautiful. We have King of Wands and Queen of Wands on the table here. Oh, wow. We also had two more cards, so we're taking them. We have the world. Beautiful completions leveling up. And we have the four of wands, 11, 11 card, twin flame card. Okay. These are really strong energies that are coming in here. Um, this is really exciting. Again. Uh, Divine Feminine, really working on their independence, working on their personal empowerment, uh, working on their self-sufficiency, and getting into a happy flow with it. You know, creating their own abundance and focusing on that, grounding this in. In order to ground this connection in from the 5D, like both parties have to be balanced in the 3D. Well, guess what this is bringing in? Empowerment for the masculine energy here with this King of Wands energy. This is a true pair here. But this is empowerment. And look at the King of Wands takes decisive action and they hold their ground. Look at him with the, the stave there, holding their ground, not turning tail and running away. But instinctively, I mean, you know, Divine Feminine, that this masculine ran because they had a deep sense of knowing that the energy was not in alignment. They were triggered too. Um, they just responded differently to the trigger than you did. This is a recognition of a leveling up happening here. This is coming up underneath this Eight of Pentacles, um, Three of Cups energy. 
um, and the chariot in reverse. This is, uh, for me, Saturn bestowing blessings here with the world card. Um, this is really coming into alignment and soul mission for the divine feminine in particular. Beautiful energy. So, um, you know, both counterparts are ascending here, pile three. And this is ultimately going to lead to union with this four of wands, with this ultimate stability. So this is beautiful. Let's see. Let's get another energy for this masculine. Ha <laughs> ha Beautiful. Ace of wands. Huh. So, you know, this <laughs> ten of cups on the bottom of the deck. This is so beautiful. Um, and, you know, again, Divine Feminine, really give yourself some, some kudos because, honey, this has been a hell of a mountain that you have climbed in your own healing to get to this point. But you figured out how this energy flows. You're learning how to apply everything that you're learning. You're putting the work into applying these spiritual lessons. And what's it going to lead you to? It's going to lead you to your Ten of Cups. And you've realized that. Um, really what I see is this Queen of Wands. So we look at all this energy around the Queen of Wands. Divine Feminine, you're the leader. As you continue balancing energy in all aspects of your own life, you are exchanging this energy with your counterpart and it is activating them in a very powerful way. Um, there's a new way of being here with this ace of wands. Um, it's in, and, and literally what my, guide, <laughs> what my guides are saying, and this is so funny is like this masculine, maybe just 5d, just 5d, just 5d. You're not focusing your energy on this masculine, though. You're focusing your energy on yourself and your own becoming. And energetically, what this is doing is literally like lighting. I'm hearing lighting a fire under this masculine's ass. Um, it's it's getting them, um, you know, energetically. It's triggering them to be empowered, to be decisive, to stand up for this, to stand their ground. And I mean, this is a beautiful pair here. Beautiful pair coming through. So Divine Feminine, you know. Um, I'm, I'm here and, and this is a, maybe a sign or synchronicity for some of you. Um, that this Honored Queen with this wand, or Honored Queen. That this Queen of Wands with her wand is like a drum major. You are the drum major in this con connection that is conducting and setting the tone. So <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I just got tongue tied. Masculine and feminine in this pile three connection. Good stuff happening. Good stuff happening. Things crystallizing. Really a mastery of this energetic dynamic. So let's close it out with some oracle messages from your heart knows the way. If you would like to schedule a personal reading, the link to my Etsy shop is in the description box below. And if you are interested in following me on my other platforms, I am on Instagram and Facebook. Those links are also in the description box. If you feel like donating to the channel, there is an Amazon wish list, a PayPal, and a cash app if you would like to donate. So what are the messages for pile three to close this reading, please? What are the messages for pile three, please? Whoa. Oh my gosh. And I do four messages and bam, there they are. Oh my gosh. This is so beautiful. And on the bottom, choose your life. Yeah, you have feminine and that's beautiful. Leap and find your wings. Absolutely. This is number 26, two and six add to eight. In numerologies, air, eights carry the vibration of transformation of putting the work in. Look at this infinity with the death rebirth card here. So, you know, Lee, keep going, keep going and you will find your 
path. Expect the best here. Be optimistic here. This is what's going to continue to feed your stability is a positive mindset here, Divine Feminine. Um, with And I can't help but notice the throat chakra, which is your authentic truth, in the solar plexus yellow here, um, which is all about having confidence in your authentic truth. Keep being in that Queen of Wands energy. It's absolutely beautiful. Here's number 33, and this is a lesson uh, that is going to help both the masculine and the feminine, is recognizing that loss makes you whole. And this, I feel, is so much stronger for the divine masculine because um, they have been comfortable in this runner chaser energy. Now they're like, oh my goodness, like I'm, I'm going to miss out on something. Sometimes we have to lose something because we've taken it for granted and we need to learn how to reappreciate it. Definitely happening here in this connection. And last but not least, we have follow your bliss. Continue transmuting energies and raising the vibration of this connection by allowing yourself to experience joy and exchange that energy through the soul cord connecting your heart chakras. All right. So I hope that these messages resonated for you, Pile 3. And as always, I'm sending you so much healing, love, and light. Bye-bye.